And we welcome you back to our series of volleyball interviews. Yes, I know it's June. I know we're just getting into summer, but I'm sorry. First of all, there's volleyball going on. And secondly, we're ramping up for the high school season. And one new member of the Westlake community, looking at him right there. And it is Coach Miguel Sines. And Coach Butch Hart couldn't be happier for you when he called me and say, hey, did you hear you got the Westlake job? It's Coach Sines, formerly of Bowie High School. And I said, you know what? Here's a guy that does a lot with the talent that he has. Um, you're inheriting a lot of talent as it is at Westlake, aren't you, sir? Absolutely. I'm excited for it. It's what attracted me to the job. And talk about the process that got you uh, to Westlake as the new head coach. Um, I mean, the process, you know, was simple. You know, they, they reached out to me. I got a phone call several weeks ago asking if I was interested. Um, and, of course, I was interested. I'm attracted to, to the long history of success. I'm attracted to the caliber of players that go through this volleyball program. Um, and I'm attracted to the, the expectations of success here. And so, um, so it was, obviously I was interested. Um, I met with, uh, with the administrators and within a week, uh, they offered me the job and, and I accepted <laughs> gladly. So it was, a, it was a quick turnaround. I know they were, they were wanting to announce the coach before the kids got to school, understandably. Um, I, and I'm starting to, to meet some of them. I'm in the middle of camps right now. And so I got to meet some of the freshmen and next week I'll get to meet some of the, the 10th through 12th graders in our open gym practices that we'll have uh, starting next week. And so uh, it was quick, quick turnaround. And I'm just, I'm excited. It's the first, first time in my, my 22 year teaching career that I don't even care to have a summer. Like I want, I want the season <laughs> to start right now. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm glad you got that on the record because when we first talked on the phone, you said that now I know it's official. You, you've made that official that you really let's don't go. want. Let's go. Let's go. The volleyball season. I know a lot of folks uh, at Westlake are looking forward to that. Before we get to Westlake, though, let's talk about your time at Bowie. Um, and of course, you were coach at Regents before. So leading up to this position on this day, um, as, as I told you, and I've told Butch many times, I said, you know, Coach Sines is one of those guys that um, in, in Terra out of West, Westwood is kind of the same way. We hold her in the same uh, esteem, the same class. You all do an amazing job with the talent you have. And that's not saying you don't have good talent. It's just there are some years where you have your where you lean on talent, but you all find a way to get the most out of your players. Well, you know, um my my coaching career has kind of shaped me in that way. When I when I first started, um, you know, I started in a small club, um, and we would go to these tournaments, and we would just get beat pretty badly. And I would be thinking, like, how can I even compete with these teams with what I have? And so that was what started the process. And then my first several years at Regents. You know, when I first got there, the first graduating class was eight people. You know, it's a, wow. re a really small, really small private school. And um, and we're and I have a young team. And again, I'm just trying to figure out we're just getting our we're just getting smashed every every time we play. And um, it really started to make me think, how how can I even compete with the kind of talent that I have? And so um, it really made me learn how to become a versatile coach. and and really tailor what I do to what I have. Now, if I was at a Westlake, you know, since the very beginning, and I've always had a lot of talent, I think it would have been, you would have seen a, a more traditional coach that maybe, maybe does the same thing all the time, because right. you don't have to do things differently when you have, when you have better talent than the opponent, you can make it simple and just beat them. And so mm -hmm. I think that my, my history through my younger years um, of just not having the talent has forced me to just be a versatile coach. And so now, you know, the, later on in my career, now with even at Bowie and here, but also with just moving to AJV and just being able to coach better talent, now I feel like I have the talent and I have the versatility. And so I'm able to 
to get the most that I can out of the players, um, mm-hmm. a lot of systems and stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, I think, I think I kind of luckily my, my career path, it just kind of led me to become that kind of coach. I just wasn't blessed at the beginning with always having talent. I think I would have been a much different coach if I was kind of, if I started in a, a great place and would have stayed in that place, I would have been a much different coach. So. As we talk uh, with Miguel Sainz, new head coach at Westlake. Okay. So coach, here's the line right here. Now you're jumping into a place where you inherit an incredible amount of talent. You've got a lot of talent. And guess what? With talent comes that big red bullseye. You right. taking over Westlake, whether you wanted to or not, you've now got that big target on your back. What do you do? Well, I, I thrive in that. Um, <laughs> I do. I love it. You know, I love the competition. I'm a competitive person. And, um, you know, I I have no problem with it. I, bring it on. <laughs> That's what I, <laughs> what I say. Bring it on. I love, uh, you know, the strategy part of the game. And so when I have that bullseye, I know that we're going to we're going to get everybody's best. And so um, it just makes me prepare more and and have to come out with a good game plan and execute, which is the parts of the game that I that I thrive in, that I love about coaching. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm excited to have that bullseye. Well, and, and for those who may be watching and, and might not be familiar with the Austin area or, um, you know, the, the Texas volleyball in general, you know, Westlake is one of those uh, programs that they're a placeholder. You expect uh, a high amount of achievement. You expect them to go out and win a lot of matches. You expect them to go out and go deep in the playoffs every year. That's what you're inheriting. And um, obviously it hasn't gone so well the last few years. Um, so as you walk into Westlake and you walked into the community, and, I, and I've worked with Westlake community, so I know you're walking into, into a great uh, community overall, let alone volleyball community. Um, what are uh, What are you experiencing from the community itself? You know, parents, feedback, uh, you know, other teachers and administrators as you walk in today? Well, first of all, they are extremely welcoming. I mean, it's, that's awesome. I've had an overwhelming amount of support um, from parents, coaches that already work here, from uh, you know, just sending me texts and, hey, I put in a good word. Hey, I'm so excited from, <laughs> from old, old Westlake families. Oh, yeah, I heard you got the, you know, and they're still engaged and they're saying, I need to come to a game now, you know, so I have felt so welcomed here. And then as soon as I walk on the campus, just the people here, um, they're so, they're just welcoming and they're just always willing to help. Um, mm-hmm. From the ladies in the office, like, just let me know if you need anything. She gave me her personal cell phone number. The coaching staff that I'm inheriting here is, um, I just, it's, it's, Sometimes overwhelming, you know, of, I, feel, <laughs> I feel blessed. I'm serious. I, I feel like this is where I, I belong. This is where I should be. And when I walk on here, I, I get that feeling just from how welcoming everybody is. So obviously, you know, we talked about the legendary status of Westlake. Have you talked to Al Bennett? Have you seen with, have you met with Al Bennett at all? Yes, he reached out to me. Um, oh, that's awesome. He did. Uh, it was a text conversation. He's, he's on the, he's on the road on a, on a uh, vacation. He said the longest vacation he's been on. Uh, <laughs> now his wife has, has retired, but, uh, so oh, wow. for, but he did, he did, he did reach out to me. He congratulated me. Um, he told me he would be here for me if I needed him for anything. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for what he did and um, I hope that I'm able to, to get the program to that status, you know? Um, and so, yeah, he did reach out to me uh, just Again, part of the Westlake community, they're just all have been so, so welcoming that, you know, that he, he, he contacted me and, and congratulated me. So, yeah, he's doing well and he supports me and, and I'll, I'll lean on him a little bit. It's good to have somebody that knows a little bit about volleyball to lean on, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so the schedule, you know, one of those when you get that transition with a new coach, I always like to ask the fun question. Is your schedule set or are you making it? And I know sometimes, you know, I've, I've heard in the past where coaches, you know, the, the tournament season, the three weeks of tournaments, you know, sometimes they'll change that. What is your schedule for the three weeks of tournaments leading into district play? Well, the schedule was set. I inherited a schedule, um, but I did change it. 
Okay. The schedule that I received only had two tournaments. Oh, wow. Uh, the okay. first tournament was open and they had some, I think they had done some events, some team bonding events during that time. Um, I went ahead and added a third tournament. Okay. Uh, so we will, we'll be at Westwood for the first tournament. Oh, awesome. We'll go, yeah, we'll go to New Braunfels. And that was a tournament that I added. Um, I immediately, um, I immediately contacted uh, Tara. I was like, Hey, do you have any mm-hmm. openings? I would love to add. And she said, yes, I have an opening. So, um, <laughs> So we added that, and then we'll go to New Braunfels, and then we'll have the Volleypalooza. Yeah, that's kind of like having a uh, – uh, in college football terms, that's kind of like having, you know, a, a preseason, you know, hey, we're going to host two games – or, two, you know, two games, four teams in, in one day. And then LSU calls says, hey, we'd like to play in your tournament. Oh, yeah, come on over. We'll be trying to make room for you. You know, it's funny that I mentioned Jared Brin, and sure enough, it comes around to Tara. I love her as a coach, by the way. Um, and and let's, let's get on to that for a second. I don't think people realize, besides the diverse personalities, and I know you'll disagree with that, but the great coaching that we have in Central Texas, I love the coaches in Central Texas. We do have great coaches in Central Texas. I agree. Um, I don't. I don't feel like we get the kind of respect statewide. You know, I think Dallas tries to hog a lot of that, but we do have great uh, coaches in Central Texas. Um, and I think that, you know, the metropolitan area isn't large enough to produce the kind of athletes that a Dallas Fort Worth would and right. that a Houston would. Houston. You know, just just on numbers. But um, Austin's growing, and I think that it'll be that way. And with the coaches that we do have in place. Um, I don't see why more state championships uh, can't keep, you know, happening from Central Texas in, in the volleyball world. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you got stalwarts like Michael Kane, who's, you know, got six rings and uh, has done a great job at, at a couple places and now taking Dripping Springs into 6A. And, you know, you feel confident because you've got Michael Kane as your head coach, uh, Jacob Thompson, who's done whirlwinds. He's become the best tournament with Volleypalooza, you know, and then you go south, you're playing at the Fraulein tournament. In, in week two of tournament, you're talking Fraulein and New Braunfels and the Northwest ISD tournament um, up at uh, Byron Nelson in the Northwest ISD. I mean, they're incredible. They're just absolutely incredible. And, and Central Texas can, can proudly claim that they're their own. That's right. That is right. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of that and compete in that. But you're right. Uh, Jacob has done a great job with Volleypalooza and with the New Braunfels tournament of just bringing talent, you know, from a, from around the state. It used to be the Paraland tournament was that tournament. Right. Now it's now it's Volleypalooza. Um, so Jacob's done a, a fantastic job um, with growing and developing that tournament. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to be part of it and competing it with with the best. <laughs> so let's talk about you go from uh, you go from uh, Bowie High School to Westlake High School, what kind of transition do you have to make just going from one school to another? That's another one of those fun questions I ask coaches. It's, you know, just you're in a different school. You're in a different school district. You've already said how welcoming they are to you. But mentally for a coach that goes from one school to another, is there a big transition period? Is there a small transition period? Or does it just depend on the individual circumstance? Well, um, I think the individual circumstances, but, you know, this is my second transition going from, you know, a small private school to a big public school like Bowie. And now I'm going from Bowie to Westlake, but there's a lot of logistical things that are different and just the ways of doing things. But the way that I kind of cope with, with all of the change and the stress is, you know, when it's all said and done, it's still volleyball. And that's what I do. I do volleyball. And Mm -hmm. so, Everything around the court may look a little bit different, you know, on scheduling or, you know, what periods we have athletic periods or how they just do things here or buoy or at Regents. Um, right. But when it comes down to it, my time with the team, you know, I've been doing this for 22 years and, I, and I've been doing it, you know, year round for 22 years. So if I count my club teams, you know, this is my 44th team that I've had to organize and manage and plan practices for. And, you know, I've been doing it a long time. And so I, I try to just kind of ignore the other things and just focus focus on, on what I do on the court because that doesn't change. Um, right. The names of the kids may change, but, but, you know, the athletes are athletes. It's still, I'm still coaching volleyball and it's what I know. So that's kind of how I, I 
I start to get stressed about having to do this or having that meeting, or I don't know how they do this. And I just got to, re- I got to remind myself, man, I just got to go in there and coach volleyball. It's what I right. do well. And it's, and it's how I've kind of been able to cope with the transition, but yeah, there's a lot of change, you know, closing one school out and the logistics that, that goes with that and trying to leave the buoy program, you know, with everything they need and scheduling and ordering things and then coming to Westlake and trying to figure out what has been, what I'm inheriting. So those things, you know, there's some, there's some stress and a lot of work. Uh, Communication is different. How I communicate with parents there is different than how parents have been communicated with here. And so just getting all of those, those kind of systems rolling uh, communication and ordering and, you know, staffing and all those kinds of things. It's, you know, it could be stressful, but um, at the end of the day, I got to do well on the court. And that's what I look forward to when I'm on the court. <laughs> all these other things I'll learn as I go. Um, but it, volleyball is volleyball. Well, you know, about three weeks into the season, I'm sure Butch or myself or somebody in the media is going to ask the girls, okay, so how is the transition to Coach Sines' program? And what are the characteristics? So I'm going to ask you ahead of time. What are the characteristics of a Miguel Signs volleyball program? Um, well, I'm, you know, what I love about school ball is, as opposed to club volleyball, is program building. I love program building. Um, if I had to give something up, I would, I think I would give, a, I would give up club ball because you just get a team a year and you just coach them. And, but I love the relationship building. I love developing leaders. Um, I think that if you were to look at, my teams on the court, um, it's energetic, it's fast, they're loud, um, they're constantly encouraging, they're giving each other feedback. Um, I also love to do things in the community. So I like to not just play volleyball, but I think one of the, the signature things for me is getting outside of the court and doing things for the community and on campus community. Um, so, you know, I, I think that would be something that would be a stamp on, on you know, Coach signs his program, and um, I try to be positive. I try to be as transparent as I can be. Um, I view parents as a partner. Like I, I partner with parents to try to provide the best possible experience for the kids. And so, um, hopefully, you know, I could provide a positive experience here where the kids are having fun. They're getting better at volleyball, and we're winning games. And mm-hmm. and, um, and that's you know that's that's my goal coming here. So how much is the pressure for you to win right out of the gate? I mean, taking over a legendary program like Westlake, uh, you know, you have an idea. At least you come in, you have an idea of the talent you have. But still, you got to play those first three weeks. And probably more so than most coaches, this is your chance to find out what you have. Yet, and, and I'll apologize ahead of time, us media types are like, you know, if you go – Say, you know, you you lose, you know, you're four and nine or something like that. You know, we're going to be like, wow, what's going on at Westlake? Although I think experienced journalists like myself and Butch and and those that know and understand are not going to focus on, hey, why are you four and nine? We're going to say, okay, so how do you have a feel so far for the talent that you have? Right. Um, You know, not sure how to respond to that yet. I haven't. I haven't really seen my my team or my the players, you know, just based on last year. I know we're getting a lot of returners back. I think they only graduated mm-hmm. two seniors. So just going based on what I what I saw last year, I like the physicality. Um, they were a young team, but they're gonna be more experienced now. Uh, but for me, you know, my coaching style, the, I try to teach um, more complex things. I, I'm I'm one of those where I teach a, a lot, but a little bit about a, a, lot, a lot. So yeah. systems, I try to teach multiple defensive systems, multiple ways of attacking on offense so that when we come across an opponent, we can tailor our game to defeat them. Now that's, I, I, you know, just being in this game long enough, I know that that coaching style is, I'm in the minority there. Most coaches were like, I don't care what the other side's doing. We're just going to do what we do really well and force right. the other team. And so – I'm saying that because to answer your question is it takes me, it takes me probably longer than most coaches to get my team to play how I want them to play. Mm -hmm. So I utilize those tournaments. Those tournaments are huge for me. It's not really about winning or losing those tournaments. It's about using those, those tournament, those games in the tournament to 
establish certain ways of playing. So by the time the district comes around and playoffs comes around, right. we're able to defend however we need to defend and attack however we need to attack. And so um, I, one of my, my, the pitfalls of my coaching style is it does take me a little while to get my teams to play a, a wide variety of styles of volleyball. Um, but when they get it, you know, it's, we can match up with anyone. You right. Know? Um, and so that's, that's unique. And so we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see uh, how quickly they pick up the things that I teach them. Um, and we'll see how quickly we can be versatile, you know, and um, so we'll see what happens. So based on what you just said, you know, it might take you, it might take your girl, you know, you inheriting a new team a little bit longer for them to learn your system. And, and right. when do you start feeling comfortable at a new program? How long does it take time-wise? Um, feeling comfortable in the sense of me with my new players that I don't know yeah. or feeling comfortable, uh, you know, yeah. I feel comfortable right away. I love people. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in the gym right now with my freshmen and I don't know any of them. I was trying to think if I knew one girl as an eighth grader, I knew one eighth grader. Uh, but, you know, I, I love people. I'm a people person. I feel comfortable right away. Um, I can step in, you know, when I meet my varsity team and we have our varsity team day one, I'm going to feel, I'm going to feel comfortable. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Um, you know, in terms of feeling comfortable about how my team is playing, uh, we'll 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 see how we'll see how talk they to me about a month after the season starts, right? Yeah, talk to me in a, talk to me in a month, and I'll give you a better <laughs> answer. But I'm not I'm not worried about meeting a new set of parents, a new set of, of kids. I'm I'm excited about it. it doesn't yeah. it doesn't bother me at all. Um, it's what I do. You know, some people they work they sell homes for a living. They work on computers. I work with people. That's what I do for a living, and I've been doing that mm -hmm. for for decades now and so i'm i'm excited about meeting a new a new group of people westlake to high school volleyball is, is a lot like the green bays the pittsburgh steelers you know the um the team the now the new england patriots you know the teams that the programs that you just you know there's a little bit of an aura with right you are the head coach of the westlake chaparral volleyball program what's that What's that say to you and what's that mean to you? Well, it's it's been a goal of mine, you know, and if if you track if you track my history throughout my my career, I've always made a move to improve um, in quality of volleyball and in status. Mm -hmm. And and my goal was to be at a school like this, you know, whether it's in Austin or another city. I, I love Austin, so I'm I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to do that here, you know. Well you're there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. And so um, it's exciting to me. Uh, it's I, I feel like I'm meeting one of my professional goals in, in doing this. And so I've been striving for it. I've been looking for it. The opportunity presented itself. And I just feel blessed to have been able to been offered the job. I'm sure there's many qualify, qualified candidates that that, you know, people move to places like this. And so I feel blessed and I'm humbled to be given the opportunity. And so um, I don't take it for granted. Um, you know, it does, it does motivate me to even work harder, you know? Um, and so I'm, I'm just on cloud nine. I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> I am. I haven't been able to get this grin off my face. <laughs> That's right. Well, you want volleyball season to start tomorrow. So we understand. That's right. That's right. That's right. totally understand. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll. So let's go to baseball for a minute. Uh, Yankees, Red Sox, uh, okay. Dodgers, Giants. We're talking legendary matchups. Lake Travis and Brandis Bourne are waiting for you. That's what right. Is, what What do you drink in, and what can you say right now before we even get to that match? Westlake and Lake Travis. Um, you know, I love rivalries. I love it. You know, I'm up for the challenge. I'm excited. Those games to me are the exciting games. You know, the ones where it's two good teams going at it. Um, it's what I, it's what motivates me as a coach. You know, uh, some coaches, what motivates them is they get a player who doesn't know how to jump serve. And by the end of the year, they jump serve. And that really motivates them, right? And they feel like I've accomplished something as a coach because I was able to get a player from point A to point B. But right. what, what motivates me is trying to figure out how to beat teams that are equal to us or have more mm -hmm. talent than us so right. games like lake travis 
are the ones that I live for. Like, I look at my schedule. I'm like, I can't wait for that game, you know, and I'm, I'm planning and preparing a lot of the things that we do before that game is, you know, we're playing a certain style against an opponent that maybe I feel that feel confident we can beat, but I'm playing mm-hmm. in a manner that I know we're going to need to, when we face like Travis. And so, you know, those, um, those games I look forward to, I love the, the rivalry. I love the pack crowds and the, uh, just the excitement leading up to it. And, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about, about playing like Travis. Absolutely. All right. So as I get ready to let you go, any final thoughts? I mean, first and foremost, congratulations. And thank you. And I would agree. We couldn't think of a nicer guy to take over such a great program. I appreciate it. Um, no final thoughts. Just I'm appreciative of my time at Bowie. You know, I, I learned a lot. Like my career has really prepared me for this, uh, this spot here. You know, uh, Boo is a great place fantastic coaches that they have there. Um, man, I, I went into the Bowie world with 20 some odd years of experience and I thought I was an experienced coach, but they have coaches there that have been there 40 years, 30 years. I was like the rookie, uh, but it was family there. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed my, my seven years there. Um, I learned a lot going from private to public. And in those seven years, I've learned a lot and um, it, has, it has given me the confidence to step into this job and feel like, hey, I, I know what I'm doing. I've been here. I've done that. I can just go and coach volleyball. So um, I want to leave. You know, I, we I didn't we didn't mention Bowie in this in this um, in this interview, and I just wanted to give them a shout out. Um, great people there, love them, and a great experience. Have nothing nothing negative to say about them. Uh, fantastic, and I'm excited about about this new chapter of my life. All right, good signs. We'll be talking to you as the season goes on, especially after that first month when you're 10 and 20 and you got some questions to answer. All right, all right. We're good, we're good.